So is vibe coding dying? So imagine syncing weeks into AI prompts for your killer app only to hit a wall of bugs no prompt can fix. Does this sound familiar? I have an idea. Maybe try to learn how to actually do real software development. After 25 years building real software, I've seen the hype cycle crashes just like this one. Investors just drop charts below, and I'm going to dive into these charts today, showing how AI coding tool traffic exploded and then cratered. So this is the dream of non-developers replacing engineering teams, and it now is it a finally officially dead? Or does this expose what developers have known all along and what we've been talking about on this channel for a long time? Today, we're going to unpack some brutal truths about why vibe coding is fading fast. So let's dive into this today. All right, that effortless coding revolution, well, usage data says that it's stalling out hard. I've called these patterns before, and I've been calling this one for over a year now, and now they're flashing red. We're going to break down some of the signs why vibe coding is losing steam. So drop your experiences down below because I'm curious to hear what your experience has been with vibe coding. Coding, I'm hearing more and more about software developers who are getting the opportunity to get called in to actually help people to fix their vibe coding messes that they've been uh, that somebody vibe coded and now needs real engineers to come and fix. So let's jump into this today. So remember vibe coders? Yeah, they're gone, right? So this article here says this year was special for software developers. This was the year they thought they would be out of jobs, or at least that's what influencers said. Now, uh, they wrote another blog post. They said, well, at least I thought software engineers were long gone. The vibe was overwhelming. You didn't need a code. You just needed a prompt, right? And that duct tape code I talked about, it's starting to peel off, right? And I love this. It was like the flex tape, right? The, exam the things we've all seen. So it's been a significant amount of time since vibe coding has been in existence, a whole five months, and the results are here. And basically, uh, people got fired for using AI. People are saying vibe coding is killing their company, right? So it's this is just a few of the things. Let me hit a couple of these other articles here for you to kind of go through. So this guy was talking about how vibe coding was trying to solve the wrong problem. And how basically what they've come to now is that they're finding that people, uh, let me find this here. So hustler game, side note, some of those self-proclaimed hustlers, of course, use AI agents to implement their groundbreaking software solutions that will make them rich in no time, right? We've all seen all of the posts all over, uh, everywhere that says this. You cannot out, not outsource understanding. Don't try to eliminate developers. Don't sell that as a promise of AI. So you've noticed that you've heard a lot less about vibe coding lately, right? And we're going to see a lot more of this. Let me pull up some of these charts here too. So let's go over this report from Gary Market. So he says, remember how in October and in March, I told you that vibe coding in the sense of amateurs using large language models to write code to build products that would have previously required teams of engineers would never be remotely reliable. Well, guess what? Customers finally found out. So as you look at this chart here, you can see the DevOps and coding completion tools had a massive run up until about July of this year. And now they've sharply started to come back down. And we're going to continue, oh, my big fat head's in the way. And we're going to continue to see this uh, happening over and over again because you're going to continue to see this, this drop and it's going to continue to drop down to zero. Vibe coding is great if you want to use, oops, if you want to use a tool for, uh, sorry about that. If you want to use a tool for um, prototyping, if you want to use a tool for doing design work, those are the reasons that the, the vibe coding is good. If you're trying to use it to ship to production, think again. So everyone thought the casual prompt would birth pro apps overnight. And I'm sure you saw your X and social media chats full of this. Now, uh, certain different X charts show traffic spiking and then tanking for months. Early excitement always fades when the rubber meets the road. And I've watched teams chase shiny tools, then scramble back to the basics. So sustainable wins, uh, sustainable wins need more than just AI magic. Now, AI crushes boilerplate code when, when it's seen a million times, right? So if there's some really boilerplate code that it's gone through a million times, AI is really good at that. So you should be using AI for boilerplate and for function-by-function function refactoring. But it struggles on, uh, massively on anything outside of trained patterns. Even Andre Carpathy, who was the original one who uh, coined the frame, phrase vibe coding, admits that he even hand-coded complex repos. So here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers, and we teach people how to use AI tools, but we also teach them the fundamentals of programming. So tools like Claude Agents can work really well to help with autocomplete, but flop on novel architectures. Pros clean up the edge cases and that the machines are going to miss. Now, generated code will mirror medi mediocre. So if you want to generate some really good mediocre code, just rely on AI. 
Um, Danish devs re re uh, report that six to seven percent time savings is all you're going to maximize Git. But if you think it's going to replace the developers, you're sorely mistaken. Um, a lot of CEOs are claiming five times engineering uh, gains. However, real developers, such as Google and others who are honest, say they're getting at most five to 10% gains. So I've rewritten AI output for security and scale countless times. Now you can look and the problem with AI is that it'll confidently hallucinate and tell you that something will work and then you put it into production and it'll crash. Or in the case of .NET, it won't even get past the compiler. So clean fundamentals will always be this uh, AI slot that gets generated. Now, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't use AI, but I'm saying you have to use it in conjunction with knowing how to actually build software. Now, AI uh, uh, pro, uh, vibe coding is good for prototypes that shine until you need to change something. So a lot of people can easily build something, but then the no, -go, no code ghost of past haunts those tools as soon as you need to change something. So teams that I advise for build for longevity from day one. We build things that will scale and things that use proper um, architecture patterns and proper software development practices. So structure is going to trump speed every single time. See, because you can write something really fast that's not worth anything, or you can take a little longer and write something that's going to last for a long time. So anyone can build uh, the anyone can build pitch ignores years of hard earned skills. Now, a lot of people declare that vibe coders have vanished, and this is the beginning of the bubble burst. Communication skills that I teach separate pros from prompts. Now, it's funny how AI fixes uh, compile but explode on deploy, right? So let me explain that a little bit better. You can go to AI and say, go do this, and it might even pass the compiler, but as soon as you deploy to production, boom, you're a toast. So that's why you want to make sure you're checking any code that's being generated by AI. Now, hype always has been promising 5 to 10% gains. But what reality is, is 5 to 10% gains using AI tools. And I've seen AI add review overhead that slows down the whole team. Um, I recently had, to, had a developer who actually quit because by the time he kept generating code, kept generating code, and he kept checking it in, and he was actually producing and checking in code faster than we could even review it. And he was a really junior dev. And then as soon as I went back and started to review it, immediately he just quit. And I wanted to actually go and help him to try to train him to become better. But instead, he just knew that he was going to be found out and quit. Now, I tell my developers to use AI, but in this case, he actually had relied on it so much that he hadn't actually learned any of the fundamentals. Now, one of the other problems here is that hallucinations of these AIs can destroy trust. Models will confidently invent broken logic and fake APIs. Now, scientists are calling it a distracted child syndrome. You want relia reliability is always going to be raw capability. So every line needs to have pro verification and critical paths. Now, it's laughable when you go take a look at some of this code that AI generates and thinks, wow, this could have actually gotten shipped to production by somebody who didn't know better. So software lives in problem understanding and problem solving, not just knowing the syntax. See, in software, there's three things that we work with. We work with people, process, and technology. At best, AI was going to replace the technology, but even that did, didn't fully get right. So we've proved over and over that AI amplifies but never replaces insight. Teams thrive when platforms boost human judgment. So when AI is augmenting human, this is when you get success. Now, no-code history repeats itself, right? Three or four years ago, no code was going to take over the world and we weren't going to need developers anymore. Now it's AI. So you want to own your own context and become and don't become slave to the maintenance. Now, there's a lot of warning labels to this, right? Outsourcing and low code made the same dev obsolete claims a few years ago. But really, it just creates a complexity that pulled pros back into the cleanup. Now AI is back to the same thing. And a lot of this AI slop has been generated and I have developers being called in to help to clean up the mess. So smart teams prototype with AI, but they build with skill. Hype dies, fundamentals will endure. So at best, you're getting a five to 10% gain. Now, Simon Willison is somebody who I really, uh, you know, really trust on this, said that vibe coding should be used for prototypes, but it should never be used for production. So it does free time for architectures, and that can matter. Human is more, the human is more impo most important in the loop, and you want to make sure that it stays there. So you want to pair these great AI tools with good software developer, developers who understand the, and have the domain experience 
to gain real ROI. Now, one of the things that we really like to do at Startup Hack is we like to come in with companies and work with them to help connect their systems. If you actually try to talk to AI about how you would connect multiple different systems, it's almost always going to come up with bad answers. So if you have CRM over here and you have another system over here and you want to try to architect a way to put them together, it's usually going to tell you to go use something like Zapier and just slap them together, right? It's not going to help you actually sit down and architect and plan and understand the business context behind it. So you want to design workflows that with measuring understanding, uh, you want to design workflows that measure the, uh, the velocity that's behind it, right? So I've helped tra transform teams that will blend tools plus human talent. Code equals adaptive business assets, not just a cost center, right? So you want to, let's think about that a different way. What they say the best way, uh, they say that the best way to write down your requirements is to make sure you try to document as best as you can. But really, ultimately, at the end of the day, what really is those hard requirements is code. When you have working code that people use, that becomes requirements. That's actually the definition of what things are for the future. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't write requirements and stories. You're missing my point. The point then is if you want to come up with what perfect requirements are, you can actually look at the end use code and that's actually your perfect requirements. AI amplifies great developers, but it exposes weak ones. You want to focus on problem solving to future proof your career. So am I telling you to avoid vibe coding? I'm not actually. I'm telling you to dive in, learn how the code that is being generated, learn what it does and learn real software development principles. AI tools can make you faster and you do want to be using them. I use them absolutely every day, but you still cannot do it in replacement of real true software engineering. Now, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great discussion, so make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our service. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology, leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer.